Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Okay, that's the complete opposite condition as hypothyroidism. Remember, hyper, you can think about as being like when you're hyperactive and you have a lot of energy. Um, that's the same sort of idea as what happens with your thyroid. So if your thyroid is hyperthyroid, that means it's overactive, you have a lot of energy, a lot of things are going on with your thyroid. This is the exact opposite condition as hypothyroidism. Hypo meaning low, sluggish, slowed down, things like that. So hypothyroidism means the thyroid is low. Hyperthyroidism means the thyroid is high. Now, why does this matter? Um, a lot of people who have any sort of thyroid conditions will fluctuate in terms of how their thyroid is functioning. So a lot of people think, well, if I have hyperthyroidism, I'll have hyperthyroidism forever. Not so, not by a long shot. In fact, all of the treatments that treat hyperthyroidism lower the thyroid, and all of the treatments that treat hypothyroidism increase the thyroid. Now you can imagine that it's not perfect, right? A doctor doesn't know exactly how much to dial your dose in of medication or antithyroid medication to get you just right, um, not by a long shot. In fact, most patients fluctuate between these states of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, which means you as a thyroid patient must understand the spectrum of symptoms that you may experience. And these symptoms tell you, is your thyroid too high? Is it too low? How do I need to adjust my dose? And so on. As I mentioned today, we're gonna to be talking about those symptoms which um, occur when your thyroid medication dose is too high. In other words, when you are hyperthyroid. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid conditions, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. So let's go through these symptoms. Now, when you think of hyperthyroidism, remember, you can think about the thyroid um, as something that controls and regulates just about every cell in your body to some degree. So you can imagine there are a lot of ways that having too much of this thyroid hormone, which is very important for your body, having too much of it though is a bad thing and it will turn everything on. So if you think about whatever it is, um, and we'll go through these as we, as we uh, kind of talk about it, but any symptom you're experiencing, which is you know too much, uh, that's usually a symptom related to the thyroid. So um, as a, just a quick example here, we'll talk about the two states that you can kind of be in as it relates to your mood. You can be depressed and slow and fatigued and suffer from brain fog, or the exact opposite of that would be too energized. You can have anxiety, you can have panic attacks. So depression tends to be a symptom of low thyroid and anxiety and panic attacks tend to be a symptom of high thyroid or hyperthyroidism. So let's go by these one by one and I'll kind of explain as we go. And um, we won't take too much time on these because once you understand um, one condition, you can really understand the other because you can just think, well, it's the exact opposite of that. So in the case of the first symptom we're gonna be talking about, that is weight loss. So if your thyroid is turned on and revved up, it's going to increase your metabolism, you're going to burn more calories, and you are going to naturally lose weight just without doing anything. It doesn't matter how much you eat. In fact, a lot of these people increase their diet tremendously and still lose weight. But the problem here is it's not all good, right? You might think, yeah, I could, I could lose a couple pounds, that'd be great. Well, not in this case, because you're also gonna be losing muscle mass, your body's gonna be catabolizing anything that it can to produce and burn energy. So this is not something that you want to have happen. Now, if your thyroid was low, you can experience weight gain. So low thyroid would be the exact opposite, but as your thyroid increases, the amount of calories that you burn increase and your metabolism increases as well. The next thing that can happen is you can experience hair loss. Now, both low thyroid and high thyroid can, can cause hair loss, but the hair loss in hyperthyroidism is different. Okay, it results in fine, brittle hair. That hair then breaks and cracks and falls out and so on. The hair loss that occurs um, in hypothyroidism is a little bit different. Um, it just sort of falls out and it kind of comes out and, and when you're showering and combing your hair and you're you know, looking at your hand and you're thinking, this is way more hair than I normally lose. That's the kind of hair that hair loss that occurs in hypothyroidism. But in hyperthyroidism, you can see the quality and the texture of your chair of your hair actually changing and it can snap or break. Um, and I'm not talking about split ends here. It can just break in the middle of the shaft. Um, and that is a sign that your, your hair follicles are cycling through their hair growth phase too quickly and that can cause issues as we go. So remember, hyper meaning high, fast, rapid, going through whatever it is that we're gonna be talking about. That leads us to number three, and that is rapid menstrual cycling. Okay, so most cycles, well, the prototypical cycle is about 28 days. That's the one that doctors and nurses and everybody sort of learns on that 28 day cycle. As you become hyperthyroid, thyroid, that cycle time will reduce, meaning your cycle could be every 15 to 20 days. 
So the more thyroid hormone you have, the more rapid you cycle through those cycles. So you'll, instead of having, you know, that, that menstrual cycle for a several day period, every 28 days or 30, whatever is normal for you, it'll happen every 15 or 20 days. And the higher your thyroid goes, the more rapid that becomes. So it could be, could go all the way down to eight or nine or 10 days. I've seen it probably at the, you know, in the 12 uh, to 13 day range, I, uh, but usually somewhere in here, that's usually pretty, pretty accurate. And then if you're hypothyroid, that can occur every 35 to 40 days or even longer. Uh, so the thing, so the menstrual cycle is still occurring, but it's occurring more rapidly. We touched on this previously, but as your thyroid gets revved up and you have too much thyroid horm hormone um, floating around in your body, you may start to get like a nervous jittery energy that can be manifested as anxiety. In addition, that anxiety can then trigger panic attacks in susceptible in individuals. So if you've never had anxiety or anything like that before, and suddenly now you're starting to experience panic attacks, that could be a sign that your thyroid is just too high. Next would be your heart rate. So again, think about it. It just increases whatever it is that we're talking about. In the case of the heart, what happens if you stimulate it? It beats faster and faster and faster. Now in the medical world, this is called tachycardia. I'm not gonna spell it all out, but you, tachy is the you know, kind of slang for that. But rapid heart rate just means that the heart rate is beating faster than it should normally. Now I like to see a heart rate normally in like the 70 to 75 range, and you can use this heart rate to look at what is happening to your thyroid hormone. Is it going lower, in which case your thyroid would be low, or is it going higher, in which case your thyroid might be too high? Now, people who have hyperthyroidism tend to sit in the 80 uh, to 90 range, and that is definitely not normal because your heart is just, you know, beating away uh, like crazy even when you're at rest. Like sitting and talking with me, your heart rate might be 80, 90, I don't know, 95, something like that, when it really should be down in the 70s. And that represents a pretty significant change if you look at it from the perspective of a percentage. That could be 20%, 30% higher um, than it should be just at rest. Um, obviously that contributes to the calorie burn, uh, but not in this case, it's not a good thing. Next up is that the force of contraction of your heart can be stronger as well. So not only is your heart beating faster, it's beating stronger. So each pump is a little more forceful, which means you're pumping more blood out, but also means that it might actually cause you to feel that. And we, when you feel your heart beating, we call that a heart palpitation or a palpitation. And um, people who have high thyroid are notorious for experiencing palpitation. These don't necessarily go together, rapid heart rate and heart palpitations, although they do often go together. Um, they don't necessarily have to go together, so you can experience one and not the other, and vice versa, and so on. So don't get too upset, uh, you know, um, stuck on those. The next thing that a lot of thyroid patients experience are tremors. So if you look at their hand, they'll be, you know, just uh, slightly shaking all the time. That's a hand tremor or a handshake. Your hand should not be shaking when you hold it. Um, if it is shaking, kind of like that, that may be a sign the thyroid is too high. Now, the good news is that is one of the first signs that you experience uh, as your thyroid goes up, and it's also one of the first signs that goes away as you, if, you, if you're on the right track. So if you slow down that thyroid, those, that, that shaking should almost immediately stop. It should, be, you know, it should resolve itself rather rapidly. Um, next up is that you can, experiencing, you can experience sweating or hot flashes. So imagine your heart rate is beating at 90, 90 uh, beats per minute. Your body temperature is elevated by one or two degrees. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to start sweating, right? You're going to start sweating. That's like as if you're working out, but you're not. You're just hanging out. That can also trigger hot flashes. So a lot of um, uh, women, um, even men can experience this too, by the way, but they'll experience hot flashes and they have what's called heat intolerance. They cannot stand the heat. So if you've ever been underneath a heater um, if, and you have a high thyroid and the heater is blowing you know, in your face, it just becomes intolerable. You can't even stand to just sit there and um, you know, uh, experience that, that sensation because it feels like you're gonna crawl out of your skin. You just hate it so much. So sweating, hot flashes, and heat intolerance all go together and all may be a sign that your thyroid is too um, elevated. Now, kind of counterintuitive uh, is that you can actually have fatigue. So you might think, well, if the thyroid is elevated and I have low energy with hypothyroidism, shouldn't I have high energy with hyperthyroidism? Uh, not exactly, okay? Because what's happening is your body is going through all of these things at once and it's taking a toll on the energy production of your body. So even though all these things are happening, you're burning lots of calories, you're losing weight, your heart rate's elevated, you're sweating, um, you're flushing, etc. cetera, you're, you're still, most of these people are fatigued. They're like, what is going on? Because their body is just sapped with all of the things that are happening um, in the background because they have no conscious control over these things. So it usually ends up with fatigue. And then lastly, you can imagine if all of these things are happening, it's going to be pretty hard to sleep, right? So a lot of these patients end up with insomnia or the inability to sleep. Now, hypothyroidism doesn't mean that you sleep really well, although sometimes that can happen. So that's one of these, one of these issues where um, sometimes the symptoms don't always correlate. But as I mentioned in the very beginning, if your thyroid is low, you can kind of think about the opposite of all of these symptoms, uh, meaning, you know, you'll have weight gain instead of weight loss. You'll have, well, hair loss is one of those that occur in both. 
the rapid menstrual cycle will be a slow menstrual cycle. Anxiety will be depression. Rapid heart rate will, will be a slow heart rate. Palpitations do really don't exist that often in hypothyroidism. Tremors don't exist as well. Sweating doesn't exist because the body temperature is cold. Heat intolerance, intolerance is now cold intolerance and fatigue exists in both syndromes and they don't sleep necessarily deeper in hypothyroid states. Um, they usually sleep is not necessarily um, uh, encumbered or ha you don't usually have issues with sleep if you have low thyroid. But as you, as you look at these things, you really need to understand the difference between the hyperthyroid state and the hypothyroid state because I can guarantee regardless of the thyroid condition that you have, you're going to require some fine tuning in terms of your medication dose or whatever other therapy you're using to manage your thyroid. Your body typically does a really good job. Doctors typically do a very poor job. Okay? Doctors are not a replacement, nor is medication for the natural regulation of your thyroid hormone. Although we try our best and we do what we can, but it doesn't really work that well. So understand these symptoms so that you know how to adjust your medications if necessary, or just so you know what's happening in your body. Um, and if you have any questions about these symptoms, they're pretty straightforward, but let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information, all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. These, this information applies to hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, all thyroid conditions, thyroid removal, you name it. Uh, so make sure you download those. And that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.